Oh, oh, sorry, I was just thinking about riding this bike stock. Today we're going to show you how to install a Power Commander 5 on this 901 Norton because stock is so boring. Hey everybody, I'm Chris and welcome to another episode of Ranching with Rottweiler. Yes, that's hard to say. I don't know who came up with that one, Scott. Anyway, today we're going to show you how to install a Power Commander 5 on this 901 Norton. They are very good for spicing up the power of these beautiful motorcycles. So if you have not seen our video already on how to remove the fuel tank, I suggest you guys bounce over to that video. The link is down in the description. And when you're done, bounce back over and we will show you how to get this thing in here. It's not that hard. Yes, Dino Jet instructions are terrible and that's why we made this video. So let's get into it. But wait, that's not all. If you press that subscribe button right now, you will get free of charge instructions for both the 901 Norton and the 790 and 890 Adventure. Why? Because they're both the same once you get the clothes off. So before we get too into it, what we want to do is take this moment to show you exactly how a Dynojet Power Commander works. They're relatively simple, and all they do is basically hijack the signal that your ECU is sending to your fuel injector and modify it plus or minus by a percentage. So what we have right here, these connections, these are for your fuel injector. And what you do is you unplug the stock connection from your fuel injector, plug it into here. The signals then go through the Dynojet. They get modified, they come back out in real time, and the Dynojet will send a new signal to the fuel injector to squirt that much more fuel. That's how piggyback ECUs work, very simple. So on the 901 Norton and the 890 and 790 Adventure and the 790 and 890 Duke, this is all the same model. We can use them on any one of those bikes because the operating systems are basically identical. So what we have is this box right here. All your interface and, and uh, computer plugs are all going to be running in and out of this one. This will sit on its own. It gets powered basically by the fuel injectors. There's uh, 12 volts to go to the fuel injectors and that's how it gets its power. So you don't have to wire anything. It's all pretty much plug and play. So what we're looking at here down the line these are the plugs for your fuel injectors right here. So like I said, you'll unplug your fuel injector, plug the stock one into here, and then plug this other one into your fuel injector. And basically um, that will be done. These are your posi taps. These, this is where the Power Commander 5 is going to pull throttle position. So basically it taps into a couple of wires and that's how it knows what throttle position the bike is at. So it needs to know throttle position and RPM. So down the line, We've got this white connector right here. This is going to plug into a blue connector of the same type. This is where the Dynojet Power Commander 5 picks up its RPM signal. This is off the crank reference sensor. This is a simple ground that goes up to the frame because it's an electronic device and it needs to be grounded. And these are for your coils for ignition advance. There's a lot of available power for ignition advance uh, with these modules. So that is a basic rundown of the Power Commander 5 for the 901 Norton, 790 and 890 Adventure in Duke. So in order to get at the fuel injectors, we need to get below this mess right here. And it's a lot easier than you think. And we're gonna walk you through it. So this is basically the stock ECU, the battery, and some fuses and relays right here. So we're gonna get started by first removing this relay right here. Now the 890 and 790 Adventure do not have this relay. This is a relay for the auxiliary lights. So we're just gonna slide this off its keeper and just move that forward. Then we're gonna remove the stock ECU. And the only reason we need to do that is to get out a couple zip ties that are below it. So first we're just gonna move these handles forward and they kind of cantilever themselves off like that. And we're just gonna set these to the side. And then we're going to basically pull this guy out of its holder here. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can kind of depress the button right here and slide that off, or you can pull it out this way. This uh, way by pressing the button sliding it off is a lot easier. So we're going to set those to the side. Then we're going to remove the battery hold down right here. That's just one T30 Torx and this just pulls off like that. Next we're going to pull the battery out. So we just basically pull that off. That's easy. And this again, this is a T30 Torx. We're going to start with the positive actually and pull this guy out first. I like to kind of keep positive pressure on it so there's no sparking and then just pull it off very quickly like that. 
Then we're going to pull off the ground. And once those are out, the battery just comes right out. Now we're going to use the same T30 Torx while we're at it and take the two battery tray screws out of the frame. Next, we're going to pull the main relay for the starter and a fuse block and another group of fuses right here. So this little black cap just basically pops right off and this will come right out of its rubber keepers. Now I'm going to suggest that you remove the spare um, 30 amp fuse right here because they tend to fall out very easily. Next, we're going to move to the fuse box. This is the same. You just kind of pull it up and just kind of pull them forward. You can kind of watch where the wires are going. They kind of self-locate themselves. And then this next one right here, you're going to get in here with a screwdriver and there's just a tab. You want to depress the tab and that should pull out just like that. We have one more piece down here. This is also unique. We'll pull that off and then this will pull out from right between there. There's a little bit of gap right there. And now we're getting very close to pulling this thing off. We've got a couple of zip ties underneath the stock ECU that we need to get to. So we're going to get down here, pull the stock ECU. This comes right out. And there's two zip ties right down here that we need to cut. Now, historically on the 790 and 890 Adventures, we've seen two zip ties, one there and one there. And there's basically a small harness underneath it that it's holding. Um, maybe on the Nord, they decided to save a few pennies and not include it. I'm not sure. But uh, on this one, there's only one. You might find two. Once that's cut, this whole box should come straight out. You're going to find some tabs underneath it right here that are holding all these relays and they just pull right off. Okay, so we've repositioned the camera a little bit to give you a little bit better orientation of what we're looking at here. So this is the rear of the bike and this is the front of the bike. And this is where the battery tray was just pulled off of right here. So what we're gonna do is take these relays and just pull them off to the side right here. And what we're trying to expose are these two gray plugs right here and right here. And these are the two fuel injectors. So we're gonna start with those. So first we're gonna take our Power Commander 5 harness and I'm just gonna drape it over this way. And you'll see this junction right here with these particular uh, connections. These are for the fuel injectors. And the rest of this is for the coils. So we're gonna move that up here. And where we want this area, where I like to put it, is right about here. So sometimes I'll zip tie this to the fuel rail right here. And this will help guide everything uh, where it needs to go. So I'm gonna get a zip tie and get this done right now. And that'll be my placeholder for the rest of the job that I'm trying to do. Okay, now that I have this zip tied right here, um, the parts with the coils, I'm just gonna bring over this way. The rest of the Power Commander 5 box is just hanging over here. And we'll be working with these connections right here. So you'll see a pair with uh, orange and you'll see a pair with yellow. The orange will get plugged into the left and the pair with yellow will get plugged into the right. Now these are the posi taps. We're gonna run these down through the frame. We're gonna pull them out the side and we're gonna be working on those after these. So for now, we're just gonna leave those and we're gonna take the pair with the orange colored wires and we're gonna unplug this wire right here this is to the fuel injector. Plug that into the Power Commander 5 harness, then plug the other gray matching connector into the stock fuel injector, and then just kind of push these parts down in here. You can zip tie these to whatever you want down in here, these um, canister hoses or whatever you want. Then we're gonna use the yellow colored wires here. We're gonna unplug the right fuel injector, plug that into the DynoJet connection, and then plug the DynoJet connection into the right fuel injector. And again, you could take these and zip tie them down to these hoses to just kind of secure them down in here like that. Now we're gonna move on and we're gonna work on our posi tap wires right here. Now we're gonna remove the main plug from the throttle body so we can tap into throttle position. So this is the left-hand side of the bike 
and you'll see this plug right here. Now, right on that plug is a gray tab, and what you're gonna wanna do is get underneath that tab with a screwdriver and push it towards the inside of the bike, like that. And that is also the button to remove it. So if you push this direction on that button while simultaneously pushing it back, you can get this plug out. Now, we've already used this bike for other dyno purposes and we've tapped into the uh, throttle position for the dyno. So that's why you're seeing these zip ties right here. So normally you'll just see sheathing. We like to use the posi taps higher up on this harness. So what we do is we cut it from there to there. So we're gonna cut these zip ties off and then uh, what we're gonna ask you to do is cut the sheathing back. We're gonna attach the posi taps right about here and then we're just gonna retape this or re-zip tie it. Now we fed the posi tap wires down through the frame in a smooth manner right above the throttle body connection. So we've slit this uh, sheathing back a little bit and what we need to do is posi tap these into these wires right here. Now, in the instructions, it says to posi tap the gray to the yellow red and then posi tap the black. They say black and white, but this is just black to the pink and black. Now, the biggest mistake people make is they see pink and blue and they think that's pink and black. That is not the wire. The wire you're looking for is actually black with a pink stripe, which is this one right here. So do not plug the black wire into the pink wire. It's the black wire with the pink stripe. So a PosiTab is a very simple device that pierces the wire with a very small needle and it's watertight and that's how the Power Commander 5 reads voltages from the throttle position so it knows exactly where the throttle is at. Now usually once I get the posi taps on, again it's the gray to the yellow red and the black to the black with a pink stripe. The instructions say pink and black, it's really black with a pink stripe. Um, what I like to do is do a tug test to make sure everything is attached securely, which it is. Then I rewrap everything and I put a zip tie around the sheathing in a couple spots and then I just move this back into the frame and plug this back in. Make sure when you plug it back in that you lock the locking tab by just pushing this way. Now we're gonna work on the coils, the crake reference sensor and the ground. So what I like to do is actually take this part of the harness and run it right below the main ECU wires here and right above this junction. So you see that hole that's right here to the left hand side of the frame. We're gonna start working the wires through there. So I just kind of take the coil like this and then bring the bits through kind of one by one and then we can pull it out the left-hand side of the bike. Now that we've pushed the Power Commander 5 harness through the left-hand side of the frame, we're gonna be working on three different items. So these are the coils right here. This is the crank reference sensor, and this is the ground. So the ground is pretty simple. It's just gonna go with the collective of other grounds right here on the frame. The crank reference sensor is gonna get plugged into this blue plug right here. This is where it picks up RPM and then the rest of these pairs are gonna to go to the coils. Now I have three pieces of good news about these coil plugs. A, it doesn't matter which one you plug to the left or right, it's unlike the fuel injectors because the coils fire simultaneously all the time, both on intake and exhaust. So it doesn't matter which one these get plugged into. I wish they said in the instructions, but they don't and this confuses a lot of people. So don't worry about that. B, there are no other plugs on this bike that are even close to this. So if you find something that these fit, it is it, and it doesn't matter which one you plug them into. And C, you can't do them backwards. Uh, if you try to plug them in backwards, they're designed to where they have tabs on them that will not allow you to do that. So in this case, our coil, our left-hand side coil is right here. So we're just gonna unplug that, and we're just gonna pick a pair, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna plug that in together, and I'm gonna take a guess right here. Now, because that's wrong, it won't go. So I'm gonna flip that around and it goes. And same thing with this one. You're looking basically, you, you're looking to line up this tab with this the kind of ramped tab here. There's a square one on the other side that isn't correct. So that's plugged in there. Next, we're gonna to move to our crank reference sensor. So it's this blue plug that's kind of in the upper left-hand part of the frame right here. So we're gonna unplug this one and then the white uh, Power Commander 5 
plug plugs into this one, and then the male into the female there. And then we're gonna take the final pair and we're gonna push them through the center of the frame, and then we're gonna relocate the right-hand side coil plug uh, to the middle of the bike. That's on a tab on the left hand, I'm sorry, the right hand side of the bike. So we're going to push these through and all of this will live quite happily up in here. You can kind of zip tie these things any way you see fit. Um, they can uh, find their homes quite cleanly uh, when you're done. You can kind of push them up here and, and they'll stay like that. So the final thing is really the ground cable and then we can uh, just cleanly zip tie. I like to put one zip tie around here to kind of hold the ground cable and then you can start kind of zip tying some pieces here. But the whole inside of the bike is one big mess of wiring, so it really doesn't make it much more complicated. Uh, just get creative with zip ties till you're happy, and that's all you really have to do. Now we're gonna attach the ground wire to the same group of ground wires that are already on the bike. You just unscrew the bolt, pull the group back, watch for a little washer, plug on the Power Commander 5 ground, and then just screw it right back in. Now we're gonna add one or two zip ties to the ground wire and we're done with this side. Now we're on the right hand side of the frame and our right side coil plug is actually inside this zip tied harness right here. So we're gonna cut this zip tie very carefully and we're gonna release these wires. Now the plug on the stock system is actually on a metal tab right here. So if you get behind it, there's a little button you could press that will release it. And you just kind of get it with your fingernail and it comes off. So that button is this right here. So you're gonna get in there and press it like this and it will come off this steel tab. Now we're going to relocate this more towards the center of the bike because that's where the Power Commander 5 plugs uh, can reach. So we're gonna unplug that and get this through the center and then plug those in in the center of the bike right above the heads. Okay, now we've moved back to the center of the bike where we've relocated the plugs. And really the only way to do this wrong is to plug the stock coil back into the stock harness and then plug the Power Commander 5 wires into each other. That's not what you wanna do. So just make sure you plug the actual uh, harness into the Power Commander 5. They only go in one way and you're gonna be good as gold. So once we get these plugged together here, what I like to do is zip tie them to this part of the harness right here and then they live in the center of the bike quite happily. All right, everybody, good news. If you stuck with me this far, we're in the home stretch. So let's recount what we've done before we start putting things back together. So we've got our fuel injector cables plugged in. We have our posi taps plugged into the throttle position wires. We have our crank reference sensor. We have our coils plugged in both sides, doesn't matter which one. And then we have our ground and that's it. So at this point, we're ready to start putting the battery box back together. So let's get to it. And so we can call this sucker done and start making some power. Okay, now we're entering one of the trickier parts of the reinstallation of some of the bits. So if you remember, we have this group of relays that were strapped to the bottom of the battery box. And then we also have this branch of wires right here, which is basically grouped positive and, and grounds that they have uh, collected in this harness right here. And this was zip tied to the bottom of this battery box at the bottom of the stock ECU location right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-install a zip tie in a certain fashion with this to where we can actually create a lasso to go around that, allow us the space to move around. And then when we drop it in, we'll pull it tight. So there's a certain technique you wanna follow. And what you wanna do is start with this slot here, put the zip tie through and you want to put the zip tie through in such a way that when you pull it tight, it pulls tight this way. And you'll see why here in a minute. So flipped over, we're gonna run it back down through that hole right there. And then we're just gonna get it started. And we're gonna pull that down in such a way that the head of the zip tie is right here. So at the end, what we're gonna wanna do is be able to pull it tight like this and then cut it. So first we're going to pull these relays kind of back a little bit and grab the harness and pull it up to give us a little bit more room. And then we're gonna start feeding these relays back on their keepers. Now they're just kind of rubber keepers that, that fit on these tabs right here that are like tongues. And the first one's a bit tricky because it, it wants to pull off. So you wanna keep the battery box as low as possible. 
and you can even reach inside and kind of hold the rubber to where it can't slip off. So I'm going to hold this first one. The rest of them get easier and easier. And so we'll slide the third one on and we'll have two more to go. Now we have all five relays on. Now what we want to do is take this lasso and bring it around the harness like this. So that way when we put it down in there, we can pull it tight. We don't want the head inside at the bottom of the ECU because that's where the ECU slides into and it might block it and kind of push it up a little bit. So we want the head of the zip tie on the bottom. And now we're going to start dropping the battery box down into the frame. And the goal is to get these relays and the fuses back behind it, kind of out of the way, but prepared to where they can get reinstalled correctly. And you want to make sure you're not mashing on any wires or pushing anything down. So uh, we're going to line up the bolt holes with the threaded parts on the frame here and push it down on. And you can see we're pretty much ready to go. Now at this point, as we lower it in, we're going to pull this zip tie tighter and tighter. And we reinstall the battery box exactly the way it was stock. Now the zip tie is tight. It's holding the harness. The battery box is in there. We can put our bolts in and then we can start working on the relays and the fuses behind it. Now we're going to slide the stock ECU back in. Uh, you can see it just drops in uh, real easy right here. There's only one way you can go in. That slides in. You'll feel it kind of click right here. Then we're going to bring the connections back, starting with this left one here. And they just pop on and the cantilever and lock locks them and pulls them on at the same time. And then we're going to leave this sit. And then we're going to look for this relay right here. This is the relay for the auxiliary lights on the Norden. Uh, the 890 and 790 don't have this. We're just going to put this right back on right there. Now we're going to be working on getting the relays and the fuses kind of back in uh, their original position. So you can see how this relay is wired right here. And we have the, the positive and the ground wires coming through this gap right here behind the fuses. And we're going to take this relay and just drop it back down on its keepers right here. Then we're going to take this positive and just make sure that's curled over this way and the ground is moved over this way. Now we can take the fuse block and drop that down on its keepers. You can see that's down right there. Then we're going to take this other group of fuses right here and we're going to slide them through this little slot you see right there. And once that slid through, we can click that back into its original position. And then right down here, we have this uh, keeper for this other electrical component. And that one just kind of gets pushed down in there and uh, slid over. And then once we've got it on, you can take the wires and just push them down into the abyss there. They should just tuck in like that. And then we have the positive and ground wire left for the battery and we can drop the battery in now. Now we're ready to start working on the battery here. But before we do, uh, on the floor of the battery box right here, you can see the straps for the relays that we previously put on. This is your opportunity to kind of push them up into place uh, where they should be. Usually this one right here, maybe these two have pulled off a little bit because they're the tight ones. So this is your opportunity to kind of push them up and get them into place. And before you put the battery in, I like to actually take these threaded pieces out of it because they kind of flop around and drop on the floor or down into the bike and you don't want that. So I take those out ahead of time and we can put the rubber floor of the battery in now and we can drop the battery in. Positive, negative, and then we're going to put the threaded pieces in so they're facing this way, not up. Once those are in, we can start reconnecting the terminals here. We're going to start with the positive first. Okay. 
than the negative. Once the terminals are on, we can start reconnecting the covers. So we have the positive cover here. We're going to put our 30 amp fuse back in. This is the spare. Then we can snap the cover right back on that. Now we're going to put the cover on. Once the cover's on, we can snap the communication port back into place, and then we can start working on where we're going to locate the Power Commander 5. Okay, last but not least, where we mount the Dynojet Power Commander 5. So on this particular model, this is a brand new 2022 901 Norden, they've added something new, and that's this little tab for this communication port right here. Previous models did not have that. So here's one off an 890 Adventure that has a nice clean top. So you have a couple options here. First option, the one I like the most, is if you run a lithium battery, they're actually a little bit shorter. Interestingly enough, they're exactly this thickness shorter than a stock battery. So you can actually place these underneath the battery hold down quite cleanly, and it'll, it'll hold it in there really well between the battery and the battery top, uh, the battery hold down. So that's my favorite option. If you don't opt for lithium battery, what I would do is either just cut this tab off right here so we can remove this. 890 rallies don't even come with this, um, at least so far. This might be a new addition for models from here on out. But uh, previous 790 models and 890 models came like this. And so you can either buy this part. I'll flash the part number on the screen for you. You can either buy this part or you can just cut this off right here. All it is is a holder. It's not a big deal. So in this case, what we're going to do is replace it. So we either cut this off or bought this part. We're going to relocate this wherever we want. And then we're going to wrap the cabling from the Dynojet and follow the ECU wires around. So right when the fuel tank is mounted, there's enough room for these wires to get through. This particular model, again, this Norden is the only one with this relay right here. The 890s and 790s don't have that. So in this case, we're going to wrap this around that. And then we're going to Velcro it right there. And that points the connection port for your computer this way. So if you're hooking it up and changing maps, you can access it really easily without really having to uh, use any tools or take anything apart. We can just put this right back where it goes and add a few zip ties here and there. And then this can just get zip tied, you know, wherever, right down in here and it can live just like that or you can drop it in here. And uh, this is a great spot for the Dynajet Power Commander 5, either on a Norton or an 890 Rally. So again, either cut those tabs off or buy this part. Um, and uh, that's it. It's a nice clean spot for it. And uh, it'll live there quite happily. Now we're just going to take the included Velcro that comes in the Dynojet box and affix it to the top of the battery hold down. Make sure all the rubber plugs are in the correct ports on the Dynojet Power Commander 5 and just affix it to the top of the box just like that. And at this point we're going to reroute the connection port and zip tie it wherever we feel it's safe. Right about here is fine. Boom! We are done with this install for the Power Commander 5 on this 901 Norton. Don't forget, it is exactly the same for the 790 and 890 Adventure, aside from some subtle differences that are really kind of insignificant. You'll figure out those along the way. And the only other differences are really pulling the fuel tank off. So down in the description, if we have any videos to help you with that, uh, pulling the tank or things like that, you'll find the links down below. And as usual, we're always here to help. The maps for these are free from us if you get them from us. And it's a great way to make solid power on these bikes, especially when you combine them with our intake systems for these models. Uh, it makes these things just rip. So again, thanks everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. That helps us. We are trying to grow this channel and we do respond to the comments. So if you have any questions whatsoever, just throw them below and we'll, we'll answer you. No problem. So I have one last very important thing to ask you guys as usual. Don't forget to please get out there and ride. as hard as I thought it you might thought it would be and maybe you think that I thought that it was going to be hard but it's not because everyone can do it. Ugh.